Slaughterhouse 2, Castlevania Returns to Netflix, and Nightmares Return to the Motor City, all on this Friday edition of Spill the Guts. I like it spooky. Hello and welcome. My name is Clint, and today I have many hats on, including I Like It Spooky Horror Podcast co-host, voice of your tri-weekly genre news blitz roundup here on Spill the Guts, and Horicon fan and vendor. Make sure to stick around till the end of today's reporting for information about Motor City Nightmares, which is happening this weekend starting today, Friday, July 28th, and this just in. <laughs> first story of the day comes to us from JoeBlow.com, who reports that a sequel to the 1987 slasher flick Slaughterhouse has finally made it into production. Back in 1987, writer-director Rick Rosler and producer Jerry Onko teamed up to bring the world the slasher film Slaughterhouse. This little piggy has none. This little piggy ran wee 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 all the way home. <laughs> Rosler always had thoughts of making a sequel, but it never made it into production until this year. Rosler and Anko have spent the last few months working on Slaughterhouse 2 Death Metal, which has been filming in and around the Motor Transport Museum and Old Feldspar Mill in Campo, California. Rosler was inspired to finally get Slaughterhouse 2 rolling after Quentin Tarantino held a screening of the first film in his new Beverly Cinema in Los Angeles and the screening drew in a full house. The original Slaughterhouse starred Don Barrett and Joe Barton as Leston Bacon and his pig-like son Buddy, who turned to murder in an effort to save their family Slaughterhouse. The San Diego Union Tribute reports that the sequel centers on another one of Lester Bacon's sons, Cleavon, who left the pig farm for a better life and was merely hinted at in the first movie. Like his father, Cleavon has a mute son who develops into a reincarnated version of Buddy Bacon. PointLoma-OBMonthly.com adds that the father and son team make beef jerky inside the Motor Transport Museum, an old feldspar mill surrounded by hundreds of decaying trucks. That's where they add the secret ingredient, human flesh. Cleavon's son is named Remdog, and he uses a flamethrower to dry out meat for their wonder jerky. Wonder Jerky sales help pay the museum's bills, with the people who buy and eat the jerky having no idea they're consuming treats made from the ground-up body parts of ill-fated hikers who are snatched from the Pacific Crest Trail. Slaughterhouse 2 is being made on a budget of $250,000. Motor Transport Museum owner Brian Butler stars as Cleavon, with local high schooler Remington Tully playing Remdog. Another local high schooler, Mary Grandona, plays a character named Ashley, and Lance Garmo, who runs the general store, the green store, appears as the town storekeeper. The metal band Hemlock also makes an appearance. Returning from the first film is Sherry Lee, who played the sheriff's daughter, the heroine Liz Borden. Now the character has grown up to become the sheriff herself. Lee's husband, Jim Larimore, plays a rich developer who covets the Transport Museum's land. Rosler and Enko both described Slaughterhouse 2 as a horror comedy. Rosler told CBS8.com, quote, We have some squirting blood and those types of things, probably not as much as the first one that we did, where we had a lot of hanging bodies. Filming is expected to wrap any day now, and the filmmakers are aiming to have Slaughterhouse 2 ready to show to distributors in January. Anko said, quote, I am looking forward to getting this completed and seeing the finished product here and getting it distributed. And who knows, maybe there will be a Slaughterhouse 3. A behind-the-scenes look at the making of Slaughterhouse 2 Death Metal can be found at CBS8.com. It's a shame Buddy Bacon never got to come back for a sequel. Barton passed away in 2010. 
but I'm glad to hear that Rosler is continuing the Slaughterhouse story, and I'm looking forward to seeing how Slaughterhouse 2 Death Metal turns out. Second story of the day comes from BloodyDisgusting.com, who drops the news that Castlevania is officially returning to Netflix in a new series. Announced last year, Castlevania Nocturne is coming soon, and this time around, Richter Belmont is taking over for Trevor as the latest of the Belmont clan to suit up for a little vampire hunting adventure. Netflix has announced that Castlevania Nocturne will premiere on September 28th, and a trailer for the upcoming animated series can be found on YouTube. The Netflix Castlevania animated series ended with Season 4 back in 2021. This spin-off, based on the video game series by Konomi, is adapted from the 1993 entry Castlevania Rondo of Blood and its sequel Symphony of the Night, which is set in 1792 during the French Revolution and follows Richter Belmont, a descendant of the Belmont family. Little boy Belmont. Your mama took someone from me I loved. But I could kill you too. And I will. One day. We will get to the last story of the day in just a minute, but first we need to pause for a station identification and hear from our podcast network, the PFPN. You're listening to the Prescribed Films Podcast Network, home to hundreds of hours of free podcast entertainment. The shows on this network all have a common goal providing you with the best discussions about movies and other forms of entertainment media. The PFPN hopes to fill your ear holes with audio joy. Visit our website with links to all the other amazing shows at www.thepfpn.com. Thanks for listening. Last story of the day comes from me. The time has come to celebrate the 15th anniversary of the Motor City Nightmares Horror Convention that is taking place once again at the Sheridan Detroit Novi Hotel at 21111 Haggerty Road in Novi, Michigan. This event begins today at 5 p.m. with the showroom floor closing at 10 p.m. Saturday hours are 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Sunday hours are 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. VIP ticket holders have a 30-minute early access to the event each day. Day passes are $30 for Friday, $40 on Saturday, and $25 on Sunday. Weekend passes are going for $80. Additional VIP and ticket combo packages are available at MotorCityNightmares.com. This year's lineup is headlined by Ash Williams himself, Bruce Campbell, and also includes Ted Ramey, Sean Cunningham, Robert Kurtzman, D. Wallace, Kane Hodder, and a slew of other horror icons of past and present. As always, a film screening festival will also be in full swing that includes a movie covered on the I Like It Spooky Horror podcast earlier this year from director John Eisberg, Final Summer. Be sure to check out MotorCityNightmares.com for more info, but perhaps the most up-to-minute information, including the full celebrity lineup and complete film screening schedule, is located on their Facebook and Instagram pages. And don't forget, you can find myself and podcast feature episode co-host Brian in the vendor room at the InkMirrors.com table, which will be located next to Ted's marvelous custom gumball emporium. And that's a wrap on your Friday news. Don't forget you can connect with the I Like a Spooky Horror podcast on all mainstream social media platforms and to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss a feature episode, news segment, or Crackle and Redbox streaming app rundown. I will see some of you this weekend at Motor City Nightmares, and I will talk with you again this coming Monday with more news on another edition of Spill the Guts. Hey, what's wrong with you, man? Show some fucking respect for the dead, will ya?